Last time on Star Trek The Next Generation. I have decided to visit Shaynok and see whether he can help you regarding the Fifth Scroll. I am excavating the ruins of a Chodak outpost. Shaynok, we have several Garidian refugees aboard who are trying to find something called the Fifth Scroll. They said you might be able to help. In my search, I stumbled on one of the followers' ancient ships. The logs indicated that they had found an M-class planet suitable for colonization. Jean-Luc, good to see you again. I have a little favor to ask. Would you be interested in finding a little lost lamb for me? Her name is Dr. V. Hunforsch. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. We have come to investigate the disappearance of Dr. Hunforsch. Welcome to Morassia. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there really is no need for alarm. Dr. Hunforsch is probably just on an extended field trip. May I investigate the doctor's quarters? Of course. Dr. Hoonforsh discovered that several animals from Aramut's second shipment were illegal species which had been mistagged. I think she accused the constable of smuggling. She has accused me of smuggling it in in order to damage our chances for Federation membership. I blame our supplier, Aramut. If I'd known Aramut was a Ferengi, I'd never have listened to Idi as a recommendation. Sounds like incompetence to me. We have conducted a thorough inspection of the lab. We should take the field units out to the biotopes. No! And now, the continuation. Hello everyone, Angel here, and today we are resuming our Let's Play of Star Trek Final Unity, Episode 4, where we are on the boring planet of Marassia, and uh, in the last episode we did some investigations as regarding a Dr. Hunforsch, where we got killed to death by annoying sound effects and boredom. And unfortunately I think we're going to be continuing some of that today. So, I think we need to start going to these biotopes and doing some uh, scans. So, let's get on with that. Da -da 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 -da. Wow. This is quite an impressive biotope. How big is this thing? I mean, we, we just went from a nice lush jungle to what is basically looking like the Grand Canyon type desert. I mean, you look in the distance there, you've got a, what looks like a, a volcano or something in the distance. This is huge. Did, okay, well, whatever. Um, I think this is the only reason I brought Worf here. It is a skull. Nice touch. Good tea. Nice house. We love you, Wolf. Don't ever change. Um. Okay, so we need to send these things over here. But we've got different type of aquatic unit. This Class C field unit is configured for aquatic travel. Okay, but let's go back to data. This Class B field unit is configured for mountainous terrain and tropical climate zones. Okay, so now they're identified, and this, this one... This Class A field unit is configured for rocky terrain and torrid climate zones. Okay, so now we know what these are for. Uh, what's... This one is offline. The power grid in this area may be damaged. This port can accommodate an external power source to run the kiosk. Intriguing. Intriguing. Hmm. Hmm. It's not as good as Riker's. Hmm. There's nothing unusual here. Yeah, well. Uh, what have we got in the distance? We do not know enough about the biotopes to accurately direct the field units. However, the biotope computer may contain the necessary information. Okay, so we need to get the power port. Uh, okay, so... Port crossroads. So there is another section here. Ah, here we go. Got a bog forest biotope, marine biotope, and quarantine shelter. And a shuttle dock. Hello. 
So again, this is quite vast. You've got mountains. It looks like a city in the distance there. Let's take a look at the shuttle dock, shall we? Can we fly somewhere yet? This cargo shuttle is powered by two 2,250 millicochran warp engines. That's great to know. This cargo... Uh -huh. No unusual re... I believe this shuttle dock also serves as the customs area. As there are no expected flights, there is no staff. And what do we have here? We have a micro generator from the look of it. Okay, we got it. Cool. Just because I like to scan everything. This micro generator. Yeah, okay. Uh, we can't go in here, can we? I do not believe that. No, okay. Um, well, off we go. We had the micro generator now, but I'm actually interested in going to the quarantine shelter because there might be something there of interest. Ooh. Do, do, do. These generators create a network of force field segments to form separate containment areas. A cage here. That looks like something broke out of the cage, certainly. I am receiving readings of unusually high ionic residue. The harmonic collector operates on the same principle as the Bussard Ram Scoop collector. Its purpose, however, is to reconfigure sound waves. Now, if you're geeky enough, the Bussard Ram Scoop or Bussard Ram Scoop is the red glowing parts of the warp nacelles on a starship, which will uh, scoop in things like hydrogen and stuff to use as fuel, I think. But uh, yeah, bit of geeky knowledge for you. This panel controls access to the quarantine area. The gates open automatically in the event of a power failure. This is the harmonic collector control. The collector has been set to emit a brief high energy pulse. This panel controls the containment field. The field is centered on the harmonic collector. Okay. No unusual. Nothing else here, really, but... This cage was broken open from the inside, most likely by the last creature it had. The harmonic collector... What do you think, Wolf? This cage was open. Hmm. Okay. I thought there might be someone to talk to there, but apparently not. So, I mean, I don't think it matters which order we do these biomes, but we have to go to all three of these biomes and take readings, I'm pretty sure. Oh my god. Okay, again, massively different. What distance are we traveling here? This, this kind of reminds me of the Genesis planet, you know, where you walk in from a, a nice jungle into suddenly a snowy hellscape. We do not know enough about the biotopes to... Okay, so this is kind of the same thing, so we'll quickly stick our triangular power thing into the power slot. This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are within the jelly corals and the water. Okay. Can we scan them now? To the kiosk map, the population within the living jelly corals is constantly in flux. Is there nothing else? Okay. Right, here comes the boring bit. So, you have to take this and use it on the jerry corals. You can see how slow this thing goes. Now I'm just gonna sit here and let it do its thing normally. On the closest object, I'm gonna add. Takes its sample. Comes back. And we have to pick it up again. Okay, then I think, do we have to use the bioprobe, I think, to extract? Yes. I think we can just accumulate stuff, but let, let's try it out. But anyway, yeah, you saw how long that took just to get to the closest thing. We have to do that several times. Now, you can imagine, if you didn't know about the shift quick movement, 
how long and tedious this is going to be and you have to go through each uh, section and do it three or four times for each one who thought this was a good idea there's, there's no commentary there's nothing interesting going on it's just bad design in my opinion and just adds to the uh, um, the slog of this particular mission okay so can I pick it up and get it to go again okay now we're gonna use shift because you know I'm doing this uh, it's such a good thing to, to do I think that's all so can we then buy our probe our way through this yep yep all right cool there is no sound uh, I think we're done here so let's not forget the power thing because we're gonna need to power the other thing what is going on with those move out of the way a second morph <laughs> I love the googly eyed things here I mean, okay, cool. Are these skulls a nice touch too, Wolf? It is a skull. Nice touch. Indeed. Okay. Let's continue. Let's see what impressive uh, biotopes we've got here. Oh, wow. This at least has a much more relaxing kind of sound uh, scape going on here. What the hell? Did that thing have flaming eyes? Derwin tree, eh? These Derwin and Grotke trees appear to be thriving. The preserve clearly uses excellent soil management technique. Indeed. The preserve is one of the largest protected biospheres in existence. Its total area rivals the Ferguson Desert habitat on Betco 7. Which means nothing since we have no context of what that actually is like. Uh, so, Tunnel 2, Tunnel 1, Tunnel 3. We do not know it. Yeah, okay, so let's... put our power slot in again. This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are the four tunnels. Four tunnels, okay. Tree. Again, though. Hello, bird. It's such radically different biomes, all within a short distance of each other, and yet they look absolutely massive. Mm. Okay, so we need the tropical one for this, so... Tunnel one. Done. Do I have to... I do not believe that Can I actually... Do I have to pick it up every time? I do not believe that will. I do actually have to pick it up every time. That's just adding to the tedium. Okay. Tunnel four. There we go. Um, and we'll pick that up again. <sighs> the blood sample shows the Berkby fish is undergoing its seasonal transformation. All other readings are normal. Well, that's good to know. The neural cells of this deceased comp shrew shows unusual readings. Additional lab work would be advisable. Okay, does the bioprobe work on these things? Hang on. The blood sample from this Nero wolf contradicts its ID tag. Additional lab work would be advisable. The neural cells of the... The blood sample shows the Burke... The neural cells of this deceased direwood ferret show unusual readings. The sample of the grath eel shows a slightly... The blood sample from this... Okay, so again, it looks like we've got mistagged animals and possible neural energy. Oh, I forgot to take the bloody thing. I remember forgetting this back in the day as well. I do not believe that. And I may have just skipped a bit of dialogue there by accident. Anyway, but yeah, uh, mistagged animals and possible neural energy yeah. loss. Do, 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 do. Okay, 
one more to do. This micro generator is completely drained. Yet the charge should have lasted several days under these conditions. Okay. This micro. How then do we? Okay. Um. Can the shuttle port charge it back up again? Charging unit. Okay, there we go. The micro generator uses. I, I hope that quick two second plug in was enough to uh, get it to work again. Look at that. That's some super fast charging there. That's that's faster than USB C charging. The biotope. The main. All right, everyone. Let's do this one. Uh, oh wait, do we need to scan where we need to go first? According to the kiosk map, the pit contains a significant amount of water, despite the arid climate. According to the kiosk map, the caverns are home to. According to, no unusual. This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are the caverns, the pit, and the crater. Okay. Whoop. That thing went all the way over there, and then, remember, no shift. Just imagine that. Waiting to come back to you. Slowly but surely, as you waste your time waiting with absolutely nothing of interest happening in the meantime. This, my friends, is excellent game design. <sighs> okay, I think that's it. The neuro This sample indicates a vegetarian diet, but the ID tag identifies ID tag again. cells of this deceased umblumba bird exhibit unusual readings. Additional lab work would be advisable. Umblumba bubble. Although it is tagged as a Genzer lizard, its blood sample Okay. Alright. Well, let's take this, because we're probably gonna need it again for the shuttle. And oh, oh no, that's Grab this guy. And, okay. You know what we gotta do now? We gotta go back to the lab with that awful annoying <clears throat> and analyze every single one of these canisters. Every single one. At least I'm pretty sure it's every single one. <sighs> okay, can we use them on the bio table? Okay, so it has to be the sonic scope, okay. Diagnostic tests. Oh, reading is normal. I'm gonna skip through some of these because I just want to get out of here. Tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag. Okay, so mistagged. Serial diagnostic. All reading is normal. Diagnostic tests and cell density analysis. Mistagged. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subjects' neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Okay. Another drainage going on. Serial diagnostic test. More drainage. Neural drainage. Serial diagnostic test. More neural drainage. Serial diag More neural drainage. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject contains high ionic residue and trace amounts of neural tranquilizers. Originating creature may consume energy. Okay, so there's a creature out there that drains neural energy that we know of. And maybe illegal. Is that the more? Oh no, there's there's two more here. Uh, all normal. 
What do you reckon? Is this one going to be tag, neural, or normal? My bet's tag. Serial diagnostic. Oh yeah. Cell density analysis. Okay. So that's done. Um, do we now talk to someone? What do you reckon, guys? I'd like to talk to healer Zolder. Yeah. Okay. Open a channel to Healer Zolus. Channels open. I am Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I am investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. Mm, a Starfleet officer. I was expecting this. Why did you expect Starfleet to investigate the doctor's disappearance? Mm, it seemed likely. She said she planned to file a complaint with the Federation Council regarding smuggling in the preserve. The Council received no such report. Well, then I suppose she changed her mind. Or someone changed it for her. Tracker Malas indicated that you knew of a confrontation between Dr. Hoon Porsche and the Constable. Yes, the Doctor mentioned it when she asked about Aramit. He's a Ferengi who provides us with alien species for the preserve. Was she inquiring about mistagged animals from his shipment? Yes, she had spoken to Zudan, one of the three watchers in charge of the last shipment. He told her to talk to Aramit. Did the other watchers also tell her to speak to Aramut? I doubt it. The other watchers were at the quarantine shelter and suffered some kind of neural energy drain when the generators exploded. They've been comatose ever since. Zudan's the only watcher on duty now. Okay, so there's that neural drainage again. We found several animals which suffered energy drains. Perhaps we could compare neuroscans to see if the injuries are similar. I'll send you the watcher's neuroscans. You can view them on the bio table, but I recommend you speak to watcher Zudan. You can find him at the quarantine shelter. Well, we were just there and no one's there, but I guess he only spawns after you do this bit. On several occasions, the Watchers requested restricted species and were denied. Is it possible that Aramut was secretly supplying the Watchers with illegal species? Aramut has a rather unsavory reputation. The Watchers wouldn't have anything to do with someone like that. But you can ask Zudan yourself. Did Consultant Idia know of Aramut's reputation when he recommended him for a traitor? Considering how long Idia and Aramid have known each other, I would think so. Those two go back quite a while. I think Idia even came here on Aramid's ship. Yeah, Idia doesn't sound like the most trustworthy person, especially as he's a dick. And, well, we all know what Ferengis are like. And that's not specious, that's just, you know, the Ferengi. Thank you for your time. Mm, certainly. Good luck to you. Idia was the last to see Dr. Hoonforsh before she disappeared. Idia is friends with a Ferengi, and Ferengi traders are not known for their honor. Perhaps Idia is guilty. I could just say, and okay, yes, it is specious, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not specious, they're just Ferengi. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, they're not honorable, as we know, Wolf. The Watchers suffered an electrical energy drain from their neural pathways, like the Mayacorde Mole. Okay, uh, can we talk to Idia? Open the channel. Channels? I wish to ask. Look, I'm in the middle. Apparently not. Okay, let's get the fuck out of here. <sighs> I hope we don't have to go back to that room. I think that was the last time. I hope it was the last time, because, oh. So we need to go to the quarantine shelter now and talk to Sudan, who is there. Hello. I am Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I am investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. I am an android. I'm responsible for preserve animals, not Federation scientists. I understand the doctor spoke to you of her concerns regarding smuggling in the preserve. Yes, she came here soon after the outages, ranting away. Imagine, accusing me when I'm the one who told her about that boar mistagging. This guy just sounds bored. Uh, here I am. 
just by the cages again. <sighs> what creature was in this area? A two meter long, 180 kilogram Sultis reptile, which came in on the last shipment. I found the watchers next to its cage the night of the outages. It's still missing. My readings show traces of a tranquilizing agent in its waist. Eremit always doses his animals with neurotranquilizers, just like Idia. We had to feed the reptile intravenously for days. It finally woke up right before the accident, just in time to escape. These readings share the same ionic residue as samples found near other creatures drained of electrical energy. And this cage is also next to the drain generator. Perhaps the Sultis reptile is a mistagged animal that consumes electrical energy. Logical. But there were no reports of it being seen near any of the power outages. And that reptile isn't easy to miss. Unless it's found a way to turn itself invisible, you're going to need another theory. We have encountered several species capable of phasing out of the time continuum and, in effect, becoming invisible. We have also encountered species who consumed human neural energy. The Sultis reptile may be a life form with similar characteristics. So again, this is the same aliens from Time's Arrow because they were just like 0 0.004 or something out of step with time, so they were effectively invisible. Um, good episode, that. I like that one. Well, if you believe so, I suppose it's possible. When did you last see Dr. Hune Forsh? I haven't seen her for some time. I've been busy recovering animals which escaped during the power outages. It's not easy work. The last time I saw her, I sent her to talk to Aramut. Were you the one who found the carcass? Yes. It died just before the outages, and I wanted her to test it. Why did you not ask consultant idiot to test the carcass? I don't trust him, always drugging and borrowing animals for his experiments. In the interests of science, he says. I don't know how he could have approved that mistagging in the first place. So the evidence is certainly gathering against Idia now. Do the Watcher stunners set off the preserve surveillance system? The system only detects signs of distress. Normal sleep does not raise an alarm. Likewise, stunners and neurotranquilizers also don't alert the system. Unlike Idia and Aramit, we prefer stunners. Chemical sedation can be harmful. Okay, so they mentioned before that stunners shouldn't, uh, or neurotranquilizers shouldn't, uh, set off the alarms. We don't know where Dr. Hunforsch is, so it's likely she's been sedated somewhere. So... Consultant Idia mentioned that only watchers can change the ID tags. That's true, but the suppliers tag the animals first. We just match them up with the constable's shipping orders. Idia is responsible for verifying them. So again, the blame seems to be back on Idia. I mean, he seems like such a nice stand-up guy as well. I'm, I'm shocked, I tell you, shocked that he could be possibly responsible for this. Is it true that the Watcher's requests for restricted species were rejected? Only four species out of 112. Of course, we were upset at first, but once the preserve is completed, we can always try again. I have examined the neuroscans of the injured Watchers. The electrical energy within their neural pathways has decreased significantly. How could that have happened? I don't know. During my evening rounds, I found them unconscious next to the Sultus reptile cage. I carried them outside the shelter and was going for help when the generators exploded. Thank you for your time. Watch your step now. Idia persuaded the constable to use Aramut, and Idia is also capable of verifying mistagged species. And he had the neurotranquilizers to knock out Dr. Hun Forsch if she posed a threat to him. We're going to have to go back and talk to Idia in that bloody lab. Only stunners or drugs could disable someone without setting off the surveillance systems. Idia. Okay. I'd like to see how Constable Lixie re We should take... Okay, so they want us to talk to Lixie. That's good, because I, I really didn't want to go back to that lab. Oh, okay. Ah! 
Constable, we have reason to believe that Consultant Idia smuggled rare species into the preserve through his friend Aramut. Are you trying to pick up where Dr. Hunforsch left off? She accused nearly everyone else of the same thing. Well, maybe she had a point. Someone was doing it. But you're just too far up your own ass to really realise that there's some truth to it. Okay, she may have been accusing the wrong people, but something was definitely happening. Consultant Idia persuaded you to hire Aramut, and he knowingly verified mistagged animals. He also uses neurotranquilizers, which could have stunned Dr. Hunforsch without triggering your surveillance systems. Idia's been nothing but trouble since he got here. This time he's gone too far. I'll send for him so we can settle this once and for all. Please wait here until Constable Lixie returns. Quick, use the computer. I do not believe. Oh. That, that, that was quick. Oh, hello. Constable, we asked Consultant Idia to go to your office. He went to get some items, then suddenly beamed out. He seems to be gone. Kind of reminds me of the MCP in Tron. He must have called Aramid for help. The Ferengi has a subspace transporter. See if you can find Dr. Hunforsch. Ah, uh, that's a nice little uh, reference there. Again, uh, that was... Was it season 7 or season 6? Um, Damon Bock uh, tricks Picard into uh, believing he has a son and, and uses a subspace transporter in order to beam himself in and out at great distances. So... Yeah, nice, nice little reference there. There's a woman here asleep with a gag over her mouth. Maybe she knows. Is, is this an actual computer? Or is someone actually there in the... Uh, so many questions and I don't really care to know the answers, really. That's her, you idiot. Wake her and send her here. And have a look around Idiot's office while you're there. He might have left some evidence. <laughs> Okay, that's trippy. Why didn't he appear that way? A bit dramatic if you ask me. Oh, uh, hello. Captured idiot. I mean, this, this whole planet raises questions of, you know, where these biospheres are and she's just here. I mean, she could have beamed here, but she just appears from behind the, the computer. Oh. So many questions, a little caring. No. Unfortunately, he escaped with Aramut. This Federation team was sent to find you. Perhaps they can help. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Enterprise. We will apprehend Idia and Aramut. Forget them. We have to recapture the Mistag Sultis. It's already killed dozens of animals and destroyed several containment field generators. This voice actress sounds like, uh, Captain Pentara. I'm gonna have to look that up. The creature must be captured. Constable, can we use the force field at the quarantine shelter? The shelter force field will not help us. The creature escaped once, and it will escape again. Perhaps we can rephase the force field energy frequencies. The creature may not be able to adapt quickly enough to the changes. That might work. But the only place we can rephase the force field power is at the main power grid. That's some classic Star Trek technobabble going on there. Love it. I will go to the main power grid and perform the necessary modifications. Good. The power grid is on the other side of the preserve. Take one of the shuttles. I hate to interrupt, but just how are we supposed to lure this creature back to the shelter? Okay. Okay, I think this is a divergent choice here. And I think the second option is probably more dangerous because last time the generators exploded when something like this happened. Um, and the harmonic collector collects things. So we'll, we'll go with this option. The harmonic collector is capable of emitting high energy EM fields. We may be able to use it at the shelter. Yes, that should do it. V, 
I'll send one of the Watchers with you to the shelter to help set it up. If we can get the field power rephased, we might get that thing under control. I'll stay and monitor the situation from here. Okay, so now we get to go on the shuttle, I think, and do some power stuff, I think. We have to get to the power. Yeah, okay. To the shuttle and beyond. Are we in? Yep, okay. Okay. What do we got here? The biphase waveguide conduit networks control energy distribution. Okay. No unusual... The utility trunk controls the field energy distribution to the waveguide conduit networks. I do not believe... The energy fields are responding. Frequency phasing complete. Constable, has the harmonic collector been arranged? Yes, but Dr. Hunforsch needs your help with the quarantine shelter. The only watchers I could find are needed to oversee the other biotopes. We will be there. Just one more thing. Zudan tells me those generators won't hold up for long, and we can't afford to send much power to the shelter right now. Many biotopes are already on reserve power only. I think that's another thing. If we use the generators, it might not be that they explode, but they take power away from the preserve and will kill a lot of animals, thus reducing our, you know, overall proficiency of this mission. So yeah, we, we could really screw things up here if we went with the generator option, I think. Um, we'll review the situation at the shelter when we arrive. Where will you be? I'll be controlling electrical systems from my office. Then I have to call an emergency meeting of the Morassian Constabulary to explain just what's going on. And that's it. That's all we do here. Which is kind of a shame, because this looks like the most interesting segment of the whole game. Uh, some nice architecture going on here. But all we came here to do was press a button. There's no puzzle or anything, it's just press a button, bit of dialogue, and we're gone again. Which seems like a waste. And okay, we're, we're just automatically here. <laughs> it, it really feels like the game is suddenly, you know, we, we spend most of this mission doing tedious, boring shit. And then suddenly we're just racing to the end. We're just skipping scenes and we're, oh, oh, okay, we're here. We're in, uh, okay. All right, well. Have you devised a means to trap the creature? It's all set up, but I need you to operate those consoles while I keep an eye on the creature from here. What do you wish me to do? The harmonic collectors hooked into console two. Once activated, it'll emit high energy pulses to lure the creature in. Okay. I think she's basically gonna tell us which console to use. Uh, nonetheless, let's do a quick save. I do not believe that will... Oh, shush, Data. Right, use console 2. Okay. Is something supposed to... Oh, there we go. That sound effect. Wow. Okay, what now? What now? What is the next step? Once the creature gets here, close the gates. The controls are on console one. I guess I should have asked her beforehand. Okay, close the gates. Console one, let's do it. Now I think if we don't do this in time, it goes over to her and kills her, so uh I'm guessing console three. What is the next quickly? Activate the container. Yeah. Let me do it. Should we wait and see if it kills her? I don't know how long we'd actually have to wait. Can I scan this thing? No. I'll, I'll give it a second. So you can hear this lovely swallowing sound effect. Okay, 
uh, I'm not sure how long I'm really willing to wait. I mean, she says quickly, um, but it seems we don't really have to be all that quick. But okay, let, let's get on with it. I want to get off this planet. All right. We did it. Now, what took you so long to find me? The investigation was actually quite short in duration. Apparently, your absence was not keenly felt. Constable Lixie had attributed your absence to a field trip. She was probably still upset that I accused her of smuggling. I suppose I should apologize to her, now that I know Idia was behind the whole thing. How did Consultant Idia learn that you suspected him? Did you accuse him of smuggling as well? I didn't confront him. I was just looking for information. But after I asked him about the Sultis, he must have panicked and decided to drug me. I should have suspected when he invited me to dinner. He hates to hear people talk while he eats. Yeah. He, did, he, he did say himself that he doesn't like people to uh, talk while he eats. I think O'Brien doesn't like that either. It appears the Watchers knew nothing of Idia's scheme to smuggle rare animals into the preserve through Aramut. They were the ones who brought the mistag boar to my attention in the first place. They weren't smuggling anything. Apparently, Consultant Idia underestimated this reptile's appetite for electrical energy. I just checked. Uh, that is the same voice actress as uh, Captain Bentari. You can tell, by the way, she kind of, yeah, sounds in the... Yeah. That egotist, thinking he could get away with it. Some of these animals are even from Romulan space. Did he think I wouldn't notice? Are you certain the animals are Romulan in origin? It would take more tests to be certain, but they definitely came from Romulan space. It's not surprising. Aramut does a lot of trading along the neutral zone. What will happen to this reptile? I'm sure Constable Lixie will want to send it back, unless I can convince her to keep it here. A creature like that doesn't come by every day. I believe the captain will want to pursue Idia and Aramut. Will this incident significantly delay completion of the preserve? It'll be a little behind schedule, but I have a few suggestions to help them speed things up. Then it is time we return to the Enterprise. Good luck, Doctor. God, yes. Let's get out of here. Beam us up. Farewell, boring planet. Captain's log supplemental. Our successful attempt to locate Dr. Hunforsch has uncovered another mystery. Apparently, the creature responsible for the chaos on Marassia may have come from Romulan space. We are currently searching for the Ferengi trader Aramut. Despite somewhat questionable trading practices, he has never violated Federation law until now. Captain, Tabak asks to speak with you. Captain, I heard about what happened on Morassia. That creature you discovered, it sounds exactly like a Veranak, a Garidian creature. Except the Veranak was exterminated long ago. Well, that's a mighty coincidence. The second one so far in this game. That, you know, this unconnected planet has a creature that came from Garidia and is exterminated. How could a Ferengi trader get hold of an extinct animal? Let me guess, is it because maybe there was this lost colony that might have something to do with the Fifth Scroll? I have a theory. The followers brought many animals with them when they fled Garid. It may be that this creature came from the Followers' colony. So if we learn where he got the animal, we may learn where the Fifth Scroll is. I think this is a promising lead to pursue. Captain, we've found Aramut. Our Ferengi trader should be at Jawward 3. Set a course for the Jawward system. Engage. I guess we're in pursuit. <laughs> But I, I don't want to be waiting at warp 5 to be doing this. Uh, oh, we don't do it here, do we? We do it from here. Warp engines unable to sustain current speed. Reducing speed to maximum warp. I think if you fiddle with the engineering stuff, you could put more power to the engines. 
9.4 though, we should get us there pretty quick. Entering Federation space. Do 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 do. According to Aramet's flight plans, he should have arrived at Joward 3. Mr. Data, report. There is no ship in this vicinity. However, sensors are picking up subspace induction vortices headed for the Nigold system. Set a course for the Nigold system. <laughs> I love these tenababble terms sometimes. Engage. At least it kept my warp speed this time. And it's not too far, so we should be there momentarily. Captain, we are approaching Aramut's ship. Okay. Can we scan him? Scan the ship. I want to know if Idiot is on board. His hull is lined with a neutronium alloy. Our sensors are unable to penetrate it. That would make it a pretty tough ship. I keep thinking neutronium is actually really, really tough. So, wow. Well, let's, um, let's hail him. They are not responding. They are attempting to flee. At maximum speed, they will be out of range in 12 seconds. No, I'm, I'm not pursuing around. Mr. Wharf, flex your muscles. Shields up, Mr. Wharf. Lock phasers. Mr. Wharf, open a channel. Aye, Captain. Yeah, let's, let's play hardball with him. This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Starship Enterprise. You are in violation of Federation trade laws. If you do not surrender immediately, we will be forced to take action. I am Aramut, an honest Ferengi traitor. I am not a criminal. Why does the Federation persecute me? Again, we've got the photorealistic uh, face here. I'm pretty sure this guy is from Season 3, Menage a Trois, the... Uh captain who tries who gets very uh, enamored with Luxana Troy and takes a prisoner I could be wrong um, but I think it's that guy but anyway you are wanted for smuggling you will accompany us to the nearest starbase where you will be turned over to the proper authorities accusations require proof captain I do not think Starfleet command would enjoy hearing how you bullied a defenseless traitor based only upon your suspicions Defenseless trade, it was a neutronium hull, and I'm pretty sure Ferengi marauders are armed. Do you remember when the Ferengi was supposed to be the big bad of Star Trek The Next Generation? Uh, before everyone realised that was a terrible idea, and made the Romulans the big bad? Ah, good times. Your last shipment to Marassia included several protected species banned from import under Federation law. Nonsense. All of my animals are perfectly legal. The animals listed in your records may have been legitimate, Alamut, but those weren't the ones you shipped. The restricted species were deliberately mistagged. This is a terrible shock to me, Captain. My suppliers must have substituted the illegal animals to fill their orders. It is a sad thing when a supplier cheats an honest businessman like myself. I'm glad we could clear up this misunderstanding so quickly. If that is all, I'll be on my way. Perhaps the Romulans would be interested to learn that several of the species you transported came from their space. I think I'll send them a report. You do know what Romulans do to smugglers, don't you? I'm pretty sure they don't give them tea and crumpets. What lies are you spreading, human? I didn't take any Romulan species. They were from Phrygis. Well, if we're mistaken, I'm sure you can explain everything to the Romulans when they find you. I am sure we can negotiate a deal, Captain Picard. The only thing I'm willing to negotiate is your surrender, as well as Idia's. You can take Idia, but I can tell you much in exchange for my freedom. Perhaps you'd be interested in some unusual movements of the Romulan fleet. Hmm, curious. Mr. Data, transmit the coordinates of the brig so that Aramut can beam Idia to his new quarters. 
All right, Adamat. You've got a deal. Done, then. It is a fair exchange. You may have Idia and my shipping records immediately. Now, for the information you have purchased. I hear reports from the other side of the neutral zone. Not that I have ever been there, of course. About a massive refit of the Romulan fleet. What kind of refit? They've upgraded the warp coils and added secondary power cores to many warbirds. The weapon systems suffer, of course. It may even impair cloaking ability. But they could easily outlast any Federation vessel at maximum warp. It sounds as if the Romulans are in a race, one they want to win very badly. Who can say what the Empire does or does not want? But a merchant always watches the spending habits of potential customers. And they're willing to sacrifice weapon power for it as well. For example, there has been a sharp rise in the price of ancient Takan and Chodak relics in sectors near the neutral zone. The Chodak again. Ah, I wonder if the Chodak will become important in this game. And as an aside, the Takan were also uh, mentioned at least once in Next Generation. Uh, I think that was in fact the very first episode that the Ferengi were introduced, which was... <laughs> that was an episode, that's for sure. And also just proved how bad an idea the Ferengi were initially as a major antagonist to the Federation. Interesting information, if it's true. I would never cheat you, Captain. No, never. Now, this has been very entertaining, but I do have other customers. The Ferengi is moving away. Warp 5. Let him go. We have what we came for. We do indeed. Captain, the report on Aramut's shipment is in the computer. Apparently the animals which Dr. Hune Forge thought were from Romulan space actually came from Shoniosho Epsilon 6. Uncharted territory. And quite a mouthful to say. I'll be sure to look at that report soon, number one. There's more, Captain. We can check on those animals in the Federation Morphology Database. These creatures are definitely related to species from Garrett. Shonoishu Epsilon 6, or Phrygis, as Aramut calls it, might just be our lost Garidian colony. Well, isn't that amazing? This unconnected mission has managed to let us find uh, possibly a link to the fifth scroll. Who would have thought? What are the chances, eh? Be sure to alert our guests. Lay in a course for Shonoisho Epsilon 6, Warp 5. Aye, sir. Engage. Okay, I am actually going to stop there for today. Uh, now that Morassi is over, I think that was the worst part of the whole game. Um, the next one is better. Uh, but my memory of that's not as good. Uh, I remember there's some a couple of interesting puzzles there. But uh, yeah, we will deal with that in episode 5 as we get to Frigis and find this lost Garidian colony. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe we'll find a fifth scroll. Who knows? But uh, do join me then for that episode. And until then, take care.